believe the plans the many have for me are greater than I even imagined. The change is upon me and that the path is more glorious than we imagined. It does not stop at a mere single mutation. The form I've been promised is more beautiful than any of that. They tell me I will float through the air and strike at the foes of our biomass with my mind. With our mind. My cup runneth over. System Shock 2 is a first-person survival horror RPG about a nameless soldier who awakens from cryosleep to find things very wrong aboard the starship Von Braun. Atmosphere. The feeling the game inflicts the most is isolation. You're the only human on board the ship. The crew has been transformed into mutant hybrids, security cameras alert enemies to your presence, and everything is just falling apart. The game's survival element is strong thanks to how often you have to scavenge everything you can to stay alive, and you need to do it, with every bullet and medical hypo mattering. Thanks to the game's ability to kill you in seconds, I found myself creeping around corners on the lookout for enemies or turrets. The tension is extremely high. Even though it provides a respawn chamber in every level, it's game over if you die before you activate it. Enemies respawn endlessly, and at the start of the game you feel hopelessly weak attacking them with a wrench, but because of how many enemy types you encounter, and how strong some can be, the feeling of weakness continues on until the late game. Even when you have power armor and laser swords, some enemies are still difficult to deal with. There's a level of creepiness that hangs over the game thanks to the story, with mutated hybrids begging you to kill them because they've lost control of their bodies. Worms and alien groves have infested the ship, dead bodies are everywhere, and ghosts haunt the place. There's environmental storytelling everywhere, and it often caused me to stop in my tracks and wonder just what happened. System Shock 2 manages to stay immersive thanks to its various systems, making things seem somewhat realistic, with inventory management, power management, research requiring chemicals to be completed, resource management, and you need to have sufficient cyber modules for training and weapons to be able to even use them. It may not be as strong as the kind of atmosphere you expect from a horror game, but it certainly gets to you over time. That's one Harry Mason. Scares. Whilst there are some scripted events like things breaking or exploding when you get close to them, most of the scares happen organically with enemies appearing out of nowhere and catching you by surprise. The regular enemies like hybrids and robots aren't particularly frightening, but when the cyber midwife makes an appearance, things really start to change. They're traditionally disturbing thanks to the original textures having aged very poorly, and their creepy voices probably make them one of the most disturbing enemies in the game. I personally find things like the swarm of insects and spiders to be overwhelmingly repulsive. The swarms sound so angry and you can't even fight back, and the annelid arachnids just creep me out so much when I don't even find spiders frightening in any other game they've been in. They jump at you and follow you with alarming speed and tenacity, and make a disturbing sound as they bite you. Thanks to the melee mechanics being clunky, you can't always hit them, and thanks to how ammo isn't something you always have, you can't always shoot them either. There's a ton of tension when doing things like hacking with certain boxes and devices becoming either unusable if you fail the hack, or blowing up and hurting you instead, which is always extremely loud. The combat can be frightening due to resource management and how clunky things are, but also how each enemy is strong and weak to specific things, and remembering what to use on what in a pinch. Your gun can break during a fight, and as mentioned earlier, melee weapons don't always work the way you intend, with you frantically swatting at enemies until a hit lands. And with how powerful some enemies are, it feels like you're sometimes asking for death when you hurl yourself into some enemy encounters. The security cameras trigger massive swarms of enemies to flock your way until you can disable the alarm, and if they spot you, you've got a few seconds to hide before the alarm triggers. But the thing about the organic way the System Shock 2 works is that you can get all of these at once, which causes genuine fear as you struggle to deal with all the problems at the same time. That's two Harry Masons. Sir. 
sound design. The sound design consists of either action pieces or ambiance, and the ambient tracks can be fairly unsettling, menacing electronic pieces with lots of flanged synth notes and creepy melodies over the clunking beats that really give the same futuristic feel that the game projects. I found the more minimalistic tracks were often the best though. The action pieces are all very late 90s fast paced techno that give off a feeling of desperation. The sound effects are also very 90s but are very clean sounding regardless. The enemies are constantly saying things to themselves and their voices and sound effects let you identify them without even seeing them. The cyborg assassin and his tremoloed voice are creepy alongside the deeply unpleasant sound of the swarms, worms and spiders. Some of the weapon noises are a bit generic, but it never feels out of place or ruins the immersion. But on the other hand, the noise for expressing pain from being poisoned just doesn't sound right. The death screams are downright disturbing with some pained howls that you won't forget anytime soon. Nick, I know you won't get this until after we return, but I've had to express how incredible I feel. We finally done it, made contact. And Muldoon and I have been selected to be involved in the initial work. Anatoly's one condition is that I tell no one aboard the ship. The creatures are remarkable. They're so helpless, I feel somehow compelled to protect them. It's a miraculous discovery. The voice acting is a bit of a mixed bag. There's some wooden B-movie style readouts of some actually genuinely creepy stuff. But sometimes there's one or two really great pieces of voice acting in there with hundreds of voice recordings for diary entries. Shodan, Delacroix, and Captain Diego all do great jobs with their lines. The directional audio is functional, and that's about it. The sound design has a few flaws, but it's otherwise pretty stellar. That's three Harry Masons. Gore. Thanks to the aging graphics, some of the blood and bodies either look quite underwhelming or really disturbing. The face textures have definitely not aged well, but when you can see the face it does make some bodies seem creepier. Near the end of the game when you enter the biomass of the many, it's fleshy and weird and there's a few points where worms crawl out from bodies too, which is just nasty when you think about it. But really the game doesn't present gore very well thanks to its age, which does hold it back a bit. The intent is there, but it's just not as effective. That's still three Harry Masons. Story System Shock 2 is of course the sequel to System Shock and takes place 42 years after the events of that game, where the rogue AI, Shodan, tried to enslave humanity. The year is now 2114 and an unnamed soldier awakens from cryosleep aboard the faster than light vessel Von Braun on his maiden voyage. He awakens to find the crew is dead and only a lone survivor, Dr. Janice Polito, can guide him to safety. It's revealed after a while that Polito has been dead the whole time and you've been helping Shodan all along, who wants to stop her creations, the parasitic life form hive mind known as the many, from consuming them both. The Polito form is dead, insect. Are you afraid? What is it you fear? The end of your trivial existence. When, when, when the history of my glory is written, your species shall only be a footnote to my magnificence. The story is pretty great with some iconic plot twists and some really creepy diary entries making the events on the Von Braun come to life, as well as being caught between a parasitic entity and a malevolent AI. There's a lot going on thanks to the audio logs with many disputes and conspiracies that take place before they take the ship down to Tau Ceti V and find the many waiting for them. There's disturbing tales of the crew slowly becoming infected by the many, and a lot of deeply unsettling audio logs about transformations. The story is pretty fantastic. Making the final score 4 out of 5 Harry Masons. System Shock 2 is a product of his time, but it's still a very good one. You can argue that the graphics can be fixed with mods to better present the gore, but I prefer to review the original release when possible. Again, I'd like to remind you this whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I never submitted to the wills of the many, I did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, and I advise you don't either. 
There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace. <laughs>